Is this heaven? No, it's a podcast. Welcome to the Field of Geeks podcast. Welcome to episode 166 of the Field of Geeks podcast. I'm Josh. I'm Mitch. I'm Bill. I'm Megan. All right. Well, we've uh, been away for a bit. There's been a lot of cool things coming out. Uh, one of them is the Mortal Kombat trailer. I'm pretty you excited know, to see it. I agree. I uh, I think it's it's finally something that isn't a joke and actually looks re- actually really decent. Yeah, it's very serious. It's definitely a rated R film. <laughs> yeah, I've heard they stepped up the uh, the fatalities, and I heard mm-hmm. that they're also bringing back the uh, Mortal Kombat uh, techno entry, or the, the version that you get to hear in the first one. Oh, I hope um, so. Kind of the opening credits stuff. So, yeah. Oh, it, nice. You need it's that. It's going to be fun. Oh, it's yeah. so good. That was like a, a popular, that's still, I think that's still a song some used to work out with. Because it lists all oh, the bet. all the people, oh, and yeah. it's just got a nice beat to it. It's good stuff. What do you think, Megan? Uh, you big Mortal Kombat fan? Uh, I haven't seen the trailer yet. The last trailer I saw was the fake one, which was pretty good. So yeah, I think we all Ooh. fell for that. I had, <laughs> those damn bastards. They uh, those ones who do the fake trailers, man, they, they get me a lot. It's like ah oh, crap. I'll just wait. It's stupid. You know they they trick you. Good. But uh, I'm I'm sure it's just as good, and I'll watch it. Oh, I mean, it's better. I'll, I'll watch the trailer. Is it better? It's I very mean, dark. I like dark. Oh yeah, I go. think it goes there for sure. Uh, you know, it's uh, you got Sub Zero. The effects look great. At least Sub Zeros do. Uh, I mean, like they showed other effects, but uh, just what he did with Jax, that was intense. Um, that was a cool origins tale about how he gets his robotic arms. Sonya Blade in this Kano. Scorpion, Raiden, Liu Kang, and uh, yeah, as I said, Jax and Sub-Zero. Of course, there's other characters I'm not uh, mentioning. Can't remember. <laughs> there's just so many. But uh, I don't think we're going to get Johnny Cage, unfortunately. Maybe it's a, at the end of the movie he, he steps in. It looks really good. I was really surprised. I, I wasn't really sure if I was going to dig the darker take on it. I do like what I see, and it, it looks like it's a huge budget. I didn't look it up, but it, they're definitely trying to make something special here. Yeah, it's very violent, that's for sure. <laughs> they're not shying away from it. I wish Kano was a little bit more jacked, but that's my only complaint. He just seems kind of like scrawny dude for Kano, but... Yeah, and it almost seems like we're getting an origin story with Scorpion. Um, yes. But it, at least the trailers looks... Sub-Zero, looks like too. we're going to get a story on... Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I think they're... They might be brothers or just enemies, and they both inherit the power of you know what they can do. Now. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the origin story is, but I know that Sub Zero and there's like Sub Zero's brother, mm-hmm. um, and I think they go by both Sub Zero, at least in the yeah. in the game. But they're they have different names. Oh, okay. Um, as and so they they briefly touched on that in Mortal Kombat Two, that that god awful movie. Um, and uh, we don't terrible. speak about annihilation. Yeah, we, well, <laughs> and you remember they made a TV show. Um, yes, I do now. 90s. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I have to go back to the therapist. And re- forget that. Yeah. Damn it. Um, that, <laughs> I actually enjoyed that. That was like one of those like Saturday late night TV shows that was always on. Well, it was low budget, it right? Like, it's character driven, yeah. kind of. Like, there's not yeah, many effects. It, well, <laughs> Well, they, it was kind of. I mean, they had they had their storyline and stuff like that, but like every episode had like a fight or whatever. Yeah. But they never had a fatality because a fatality would be too brutal for TV. <laughs> yeah, right. So then they just had like some sort of roundhouse kick move that Chuck Norris <laughs> would do, and then you know they fall in it. slow motion. And, yes. And that would be it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, Annihilation just destroyed the whole franchise. I mean, yeah, the show was probably a. Kind of like what Highlander did, you know. The Yeah, it, it did have a Highlander feel to it because it's just like each week you had a new opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was never anybody got killed kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like syndicated, like right? Return. It wasn't like primetime. It was, it was 
you yeah, had to, you had to yeah, find so it. You still had Johnny Cage. <laughs> you still had Sonya Blade. Yeah. Um, I think you had Reptile. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I know a couple of those guys ended up being in the movie, in the in the second movie. Sure. Um, as stunt guys. So yeah. I think they did a fan fiction one on youtube maybe if i remember correctly and i sure. think michael j white was on there and it was very dark yeah. extremely dark um I think yeah I maybe watched one episode but yeah definitely not uh <laughs> not looking like what we've seen before but yeah it was interesting yeah, it, was take. That, uh, it was back when uh yeah it was back when machinima was still around it was like mortal Kombat legacy i think is what it was called yep that sounds right yes something like that what do you think about the uh classic lines of sub-zero and uh scorpion i like sub-zero uh, um scorpion didn't seem dark enough yeah i was yeah it, I was, didn't, he, it didn't sound like scorpion i was disappointed by yeah. scorpion yeah i mean it's all right it, it needs to be like louder and more get over more. here yeah. yeah yeah a little bit more angry instead of just like get over here it was just like get <laughs> over here it's like <laughs> can you can you please come over here? Yeah, just a little bit yeah, further. It's, it's like being mildly angry with It's okay, your wife. we both have masks on. You don't have to social yeah. distance. Look. Can you come over here, okay? Can you come over here, please? I just want to talk. I just want to talk. <laughs> yeah. With this dagger. <laughs> what is Sub Zero? Oh yeah, Sub Zero is just like uh I'm Sub Zero. I like that. That was a cool yeah, line. And I that thought that was pretty good. cool. Yeah. Very ancient looking costumes, not, uh, I kind of like the basic look, but I get they're trying to, you know, give it some history. Like Disappointed that. by Raiden's suit. Um, I am impressed by Kung Lao. That yes. hat that he wears is spot on and so is his mm. outfit. That's yep. spot on. Right. Um, but Raiden's is kind of like, you know, they're just trying too hard to change it. I, they should keep it as comic book accurate or as right. um, game accurate as they could, you know. Yeah, maybe uh, you'll have some wardrobe changes. <laughs> Many looks of Raiden. And oh. I hope that you do the uh, the voiceover, you know, and it's like, Liu Kang wins. Oh, Instead of just, cool. you know. Like some, some yeah. guy up high on the mountain with a like a cigarette throat thing happening. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wins. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, wasn't the wasn't the first game like some really old, old guy or something like that that you have to fight? Yeah, that was Shang Tsung. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I th I think the way they did it in the games was like the the main boss was the quote announcer. Yeah, yeah, of the tournament or whatever. I don't know, but yeah, they there's a whole story behind that, like why he was so old in the first one and why he got kind of restored to like his mid twenties in the second one. But oh right, um, yeah, the movie, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm not sure what they're gonna do with with the movie adaptation of that, but. Either way, I mean, they've got a solid cast for it. They do. Like the cast they do. just looks amazing. Just, so, yeah, if it's successful, they should just, you know, keep going, and hopefully they can stay on course, you know, keep the theme just right, not go yeah. crazy like Annihilation or whatnot. But, yeah, it looks great. Jax, his, his robotic arms look fantastic. Like, the special effects look great. I mean, they're really top-notch, in my opinion, so... Yeah, I look forward to it. It's going to be great. I hope so. <laughs> I hope every video game adaptation film is good. But, yeah, they're very yeah, very rare. Yeah, Mortal Kombat is still the favorite in my book. As I haven't seen the trailer, but what are they releasing it on? HBO Max. Okay. I think it might go to theaters, is, too, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it is going to have a theatrical release. Sweet. I think uh, April 15th or something like that. Cool. I'm not sure how long it's going to be in theaters, but yeah, I'm definitely going to go see it in IMAX. I think that's the way to see it. Well, yeah, there's a side note. There's <laughs> they're trying to bring up the box office wars again because, you know, there are some bigger films in in the cinemas like you got Tom and Jerry and uh, Disney just released one of theirs. And already they're like, oh, it flopped. I'm like, this is not a regular attendance. Like you I don't I'm not falling no. for these headlines. This is stupid. Like it's so different. No, and it's. It really like I went and saw the Tom and Jerry movie with my daughter, and I thought, thought it was really good. I think it probably yeah. just should have come out during the summertime, right? And you know, maybe more kids would have been able to go see it. Maybe it know. was supposed to. I'm not sure, but yeah, that was that was pretty good. I thought, yeah, my kids and I enjoyed that. But yeah, we couldn't watch the. Uh, I wish I could remember offhand the Disney one that just came out. It's like a, a girl and a dragon or something. Um, yeah, and the last dragon or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's on premiere access through Disney Plus, which is thirty bucks. No way, I'm not. No, 
gross. No, just like you know, Mulan. Yeah, just, just wait a couple weeks; it'll it'll come out. I'd rather you know, as big of a hit as theaters have taken. Like, mm-hmm. I'd I'd rather give them the money than spend an extra thirty bucks on Disney Plus to watch it at home. <laughs> right? Yeah, but yeah. That's just that's just me. Like, I kind of get the convenience, especially if it's a longer movie. Like, yeah, you know the Snyder cut. Right. It's going to be four yeah. hours long. Like, I, I'd watch that at home so I can pause halfway through and not miss anything. I was going to say, who's bringing a bottle to pee in? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That doesn't look like Pepsi. Doesn't right. taste like it either. Oh, my God. Why do you have an empty milk cut curtain with you? Oh, don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. Well, since you brought gotta up, get my gotta get my gains in. <laughs> since you brought up the Snyder Cut, is everyone here looking forward to it? I mean, I think I know the answer to that, but you see these teasers more and more now. Super pumped! Yeah, I'm down. I, uh, I mean, he keeps on releasing. Seems like a new, a new um, trailer every day, but it's all based on each character in that uh, show. So yeah, what I've I. I don't know if you guys follow this on Reddit, but uh, the DCEU leaks, um, they've already gotten some unconfirmed photos of Martian Manhunter. Um, so it, it just, it looks amazing. I mean, we've already mm-hmm. heard him yeah. as a voice, mm-hmm. uh, but we haven't uh, we haven't actually seen him mm-hmm. yet. So it's going to be sure. real fun doing that. And I, God, for what it's worth, I really hope that, uh, you know, Either Warner Brothers or HBO wakes up and realizes we need to finish this five-story arc. Um, and I also hope uh, in the same return that we don't uh, get kind of a wrapped-up version of his of his full mm-hmm. idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because then that's just going to be a cop-out. Like, it's not the true Zack Snyder version. Right, yeah. Um, I, I hope it does leave on a cliffhanger to the point where people want it. It's confirmed, I think, back. for the most part, he did say... It will have a cliffhanger ending to it, so it's like Good. the balls in WB's court after that. If they want to, because it looks like from what it sounds like, uh, AT&T is kind of they pulled for the Snyder cut more than the WB did because of the execs. You know, they don't want to deal with Snyder and you know all the treatment that he went through. So yeah, yeah this is like an AT&T thing. Like they're like, hey, I don't care if you want to do it, we're gonna do it. So if there's enough people wanting to see more from snyder i could see 18 i could see 18 t jump in and be like step aside he, he can do this so are they in the process of shooting uh, the next aquaman and i only asked that because i watched a, a insta story with jason momoa and he mentioned that that they were on set i mm. mean it was a very brief mentioned it and then it was done not sure i don't so know I'm- well, and the big question is, is Amber Heard returning? You get you keep seeing that on YouTube and everything, like, oh, they're going to replace her. I don't know. I don't, nah, she's, I don't I thought she's not going anywhere. Had, I thought they'd finalized that, that they were getting rid of her. Or was that just That's probably just, yeah, this, there's just so many people out there. It's like, it's hard to believe what's true until WB actually says it. But who knows? They could change their mind up to the point where they start shooting. But Emily Clark is like the... The fan favorite. They keep putting her image into <laughs> Mira, you know, and it's like, all right, I don't know. That's Ooh. too much Game of Thrones uh, fan fanfare right there. I'll, I'll look. I'll look into it a little bit more. I mean, sure, Joey would know, but I just I, he like briefly mentioned it. this is like an Insta story he posted. I think yesterday or oh the okay. Day watched it maybe so. yeah, maybe. <laughs> Speaking of Joey, he actually just went to Detroit this last uh, weekend and saw a screening of BVS, and he I think got to see some of the sites because it was filmed in Detroit. So thought I'd mention that uh, seemed like a cool trip for him. You know, a lot of people he met through the release of Snyder Cut got together to watch this screening. So I think it was just a regular screening. I don't think it was like the new extended edition for IMAX Snyder was working on, but. I did joke with him and say, what if Snyder shows up with the Snyder cut? <laughs> That'd be nuts. That'd be so crazy. But That would be. Yeah. I mean, it's four hours. You'd be there forever. <laughs> I'm excited, yeah, right. though. I'm, I'm ready for it. Uh, I've already made plans to see it, I think, with my cousin. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm i very excited. Hopefully, the server doesn't crash on that day. But <laughs> All right, Now, are they going to do this beforehand or after the release on on uh, HBO. HBO first. And okay. I think Good. the theater, I think it's going to theaters. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Seems like it's always changing, but 
Yeah. I know Wonder Woman went in theaters before it re- was released. So uh, given that the Snyder Cut's kind of a um, a movement, if you will, type of film, you know, it's not really um, – because WB isn't really advertising it much. So, you know, right. they want it to they fail. I really believe that. Things. Yeah, they, and yeah, yeah, I was gonna say they didn't do any marketing for it. No, and no, and I'd I'd be really surprised and and find it absolutely hilarious if uh, this new Superman that they're gonna go down just tanks in the theaters. Yeah. and uh, and this uh, Snyder cut does really well. I haven't really read into that project, but J.J. Abrams is attached, and I'm not a fan of his really anymore. I think he totally destroyed everything he's he touched. You know, that's existed. No, 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 no. Uh, Star Trek I thought was really good. I was really excited about that. Yeah, like the first one, and then yeah. Into Darkness, I think, ruined things for me anyway, just as a fan. It's just, you know, not as bad as Star Wars, because that, you know, The Rise of Skywalker yeah. was just like, what the hell? What What is this? There's no explanation here. Why is Palpatine back, you know? But I don't know. Maybe uh, uh, he will. I think he's going to produce this new Superman film, and there's a lot of talk. It's just, it's like a another, it's a different Superman. It's from, like maybe from another universe. I don't know if the Flash will set all this up or not. Who who knows? But we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I really think Henry Cavill still needs to be Superman. It's a perfect casting. It'd just be a shame if they didn't utilize him in any you know shape or form. But you know he's got success elsewhere. So if it's on them, if they don't want to, if they don't want to do it, then he'll be fine. <laughs> Speaking of Superman, we're into recommendations right now. Uh, I just caught Superman and Lois CW show. Very hesitant to watch it because of, you know, CW has become very formulaic, I think, with their superhero shows. So, yeah, I was really mm. hesitant, but then there started to get a lot of good buzz and traction about this, you know, these two pilot episodes, if you will. So, yeah, basically the premise is Superman and Lois, they deal with all the stresses, pressures, and complexities that come with working parents in today's society. So it's very... uh Set in our time where, you know, you have a lot of newspapers closing down. The Daily Planet is pretty much going digital, cutting cutting some jobs. Clark Kent is one of them that was cut. It stars Tyler Hoechlin and Elizabeth Tolak. And they're very well casted, I think. They were already on the CW Supergirl show. But he has a new suit on this. It's almost like they... Pretend that didn't happen, I think. You know, it just feels like it's a very fresh take. They move back to Smallville. They have two boys. <laughs> one's a jock. One's kind of a nerd. And uh, the show overall is just, I think it's great. It's got a great concept. But Steve actually wrote uh, a good thing about the show and some other topics as well. It's under his comic blog. If you want to hey. check that out, steveskomicblog.com. So, yeah, very uh, very interesting take on what he thought. Definitely check it out, at least the first two episodes. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But, yeah, you can go on the CW app and and check them out. So, yeah, it's Tuesday nights at 8. For somebody like me who's not big into Superman, would it be easy for me to, like, get into it? or? Yeah, I think so, because because uh, the, the parent dynamic, you know, if you're a parent, you definitely um, you definitely feel for them because they're, they're going, you know, they're not like the Brady Bunch. You know, they, there's issues and... You know, they're teenage boys, so, it you know, there's a lot of issues there moving from <laughs> one town to another. But, yeah, it's really, you know, it really helps you relate to the characters more. And he just happens to be Superman, you know. So, you know, it's you feel right. bad when he has to leave because he is kind of an absent father. So they do. And you can tell from the trailers. I'm not giving much away, but they, they didn't know he was Superman. Uh, Clark never wanted to tell him. Lois did. And finally, they did. <laughs> had questions and all that stuff so yeah. you, do, you do feel bad when yeah something's going on he has to leave and you know it's just kind of like sorry kids i gotta do this i know that this is kind of a cheap shot and kind of campy but uh i did post something on the page on february 28th uh regarding the donnie and marie star wars holiday oh, special God. um and uh if you guys <laughs> haven't seen it i highly recommend going to our facebook page <laughs> Uh, field of geeks there you go i know it's a shameless plug however that's okay it uh it it does go to show the lengths of how corny uh some studio companies or even uh, people would get uh to uh make money mm-hmm. and especially in the 70s um where the psychedelic uh, drugs ruled the world um <laughs> it make it takes it even a step further and then seeing donnie and marie dress up as han solo and uh 
and uh, Princess Leia just really tops the cake. Well, that um, was the, that was Luke Skywalker. You, you remember who Han Solo yes, was, I'm right? Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're uh, fine. Looked, uh, you know, the hairdo kind of threw me off. No, um, I get it. I, no. will, I, I do ask though: Is that Peter Mayhew in uh, in Chewbacca, or is that just a Chewbacca stand-in? I doubt um, it. I doubt I'll it. let you guys uh, <laughs> take the note on that one, but uh, it's it's got uh, stormtroopers dancing around them and singing a song. It is the uh, the creepiest thing you'll ever see. I'm sure George made a ton of money off of it, but uh, it's show there tunes. You go. They're singing so, show tunes, I yes. think, aren't they? Oh my god, it's so <laughs> yes, bad. They are, but uh, please uh, make sure to check that out. Chris, it is, uh, one of the yes, kind. yeah. Oh yeah, thank you for that. I think. Yes. Um, I didn't know that existed. I'm like, wow. The Star Wars holiday special looks a little bit better. Um, but yeah, really goes to show you right. like they didn't know what the hell to do with Star Wars. They just knew it was popular and like, let's just put some music with it and <laughs> get a lot of ratings. Yeah, and-, and that's that's really kind of the the <laughs> the story about it all is be careful what you wish for because oh my gosh. not everything equates to money. So corny, yeah. And if you try it's, oh, it's it's terrible. It's bad. Chris yeah. Chris Christopherson well, the- is Han Solo. He plays Han Solo. Out of all people, Chris Christopherson. Really? Yes, beard and all. <laughs> Chris Christopherson is oh Han my God. Solo. Whistler. I, I can't. You know, I know he has a background in music and everything, but I know him more from like the Blade films. You know, they even the Ninja Turtles went on tour as like a band. One thing. It's just. Oh yeah, I saw that tour or you know show here in Des Moines. Yeah, we... out of our shells. <laughs> Have a like Mitch said, when you have something that's popular and you don't know what to do with it, but you yes. know you want to make money off of it, you just kind of throw it at the wall to see if it sticks. Yep. Yeah. Well, it sure did. Remember Vanilla Ice? Vanilla Ice had that whole secrets of the oh, ooze. I have a recommendation track. as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. he did. Oh, yes, Ninja Rap. Ninja, yes, go Ninja, ninja go Ninja, go. <laughs> I like that. Oh, it's good stuff. Thank you, nineties. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bring back Extra Cooler. Doing yes. Just like, um, I was going to make a recommendation for another um, series on YouTube. Um, anyone who watched Power Rangers in Space back when that was on the air, the guy that played the Red Ranger in that came back for this series. Oh. And he's playing like kind of a darker version of his character. So Really? Um, they've only done one episode so far, but it's kind of like a – they did like a crowdfunding kind of thing. They do have some kind of legacy characters involved in it. Um Cool. But it's kind of cool to check out, especially if you're a Power Rangers fan. So for sure. Have you ever gotten the Pink Ranger back from the original? No. She's oh. she's actually the the only thing she's done Power Rangers related was like having her cameo in the two thousand yes seventeen Power Rangers. Oh, but that was seriously? about it. Yeah. It's very brief, yeah. <laughs> but uh Is this a dark no, take called, then? Uh, yeah, it's a little more um it kind of seems like the Power Rangers are a little more of like a like a jackbooted, you know, like police force kind mm-hmm. of thing now. Sure. Something like that. So um it's kind of interesting. The first episode's very short, it's about fifteen minutes, but uh they are going to be producing a full season on this, hopefully. Wow, okay. Cool. Um so it's called it's on the channel The Nerdist oh, sweet. on YouTube. Um it's called Bloodline of the Grid. So Ooh, cool. Check that out if you're a Power Rangers fan. Thank cool you. Name. I like that. It's like disguised in case you're not a Power Rangers fan and you become one because it's like, yes. What? Yeah. But if you're if you're going into it expecting him to look like all long haired with like the highlights and shit like that, yeah. like he's got a total makeover. Okay. This. Sure. Like he's totally different. He looks like a little more Mad Max. Oh in this <laughs> show. So he's kind of still back. I, Zordon's actually he died uh, spoiler alert he died at the end of Power Rangers in Space uh, so did the Muppets kill the, him? Uh, <laughs> yeah. sorry couldn't help <laughs> it we're gonna kill you we're gonna kill you Zordon <laughs> even Spiggy heard me that sledgehammer <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we'll be right back but no he uh, he actually Mitch was saying that the guy who plays Kano doesn't really look too much like herbs josh or Mitch, yeah. one of you was saying that yeah that the guy that plays kano doesn't really look like kano yeah if you look at how christopher came and lee looks in this in this series i think he looks perfect for kano but 
that's just me. Well, there you go. Maybe My he tried out it. for it. <laughs> he, maybe he did. Maybe that's why he shaved his then, head. I don't know. He did this instead. He's like, damn it. Okay, fine. I'll go back. <laughs> you know, but I'm really hoping that they stick with it because there's so many like good fan films and fan series out there that they start yeah. it and then they can't get enough funding for it. So it just kind of ends. Right. So right. I'm really hoping that it, that it keeps going. Also, I think, I don't know if it came out today or if it's coming out sometime yet this week, but uh, Bat in the Sun has a new Batman film coming out. Yes. I saw that. That looks good. Um, I know Michael Madsen anyway. is playing Harvey Bullock. And yes. uh, Doug Jones is actually in it. Who you know He's played um, Abe Sapien and a lot of characters yep. for uh, Guillermo del, del Toro. But, uh, if, you've, uh, if you've never seen Kevin Porter play... Bruce Wayne slash Batman, you definitely need to check it out because he's probably in my top five for Batman actors. Oh yeah, really? the costume's great too. It looks it looks amazing. Yeah, he everything looks amazing. Great. Uh, he does an amazing Batman, and Aaron Schenke, the guy that runs Bat Batman Son, he does a really good like spot on Joker. Oh sure, as sure. Well. So yep. I mean, it's I, I think it's very very much worth checking out. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I look forward to that. Gives us a little bit more uh, Batman before we get this. Well, I don't know if it'll be out before the Snyder Cut or after. Probably after, I imagine. Snyder Cut's coming in two weeks or so, right? Yeah. I know they were still like finalizing some stuff with the audio and sure. editing and stuff like that. So I don't know if it's going to be the next week or two, something like that. But Yeah, like you, uh, I follow that page. It's, co it's cool to see how they're coming and their announcements and the reveals. Pretty neat. Golden Globes were like, what, five hours long? <laughs> I know. Uh, so the yeah. funny thing about that is that I didn't even know that they had happened until I... like two days after the fact. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, wait. <laughs> it's so different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you in a way were our correspondent. So thank you very much. And yeah, let's recap this sucker. Yeah, here it is. Golden Globes in 30 seconds. Borat wins Best Actor for Best Motion Picture for Musical or Comedy. Uh, thanks, Rudolph Giuliani, for unzipping his pants. And Eliza Fisher, pretty in pink with an exceptionally large smile. Anna Taylor <laughs> wins Best Actress in a limited series, awkwardly air grabs at Nicole Kidman and zips her lips and throws away the key. Uh, Jodie Foster gives acceptance speech in her PJs and she thanks her dog. And then Jeff Daniels embodies all of us normal folk on Zoom with way too many doors. I don't know if you saw that <laughs> definitely made its rounds on what I recently discovered is Room Raider. Uh, so if you want to check that out, I definitely <laughs> recommend that because they rate rooms, not just for the Golden Globes, but for like CNN correspondents, um, but just like not a major uh, news broadcasters. And they rate these rooms based off of like just different things that they see or the picture quality or <laughs> what have you. And it's actually really funny. And so he made their Twitter with his, um, door count and actually I, I looked at it and there are quite a few doors there it's very confusing <laughs> he's a rich man <laughs> i think one's a closet one's like to narnia and then one's a red room to the outs yeah it's a red room and then maybe one is the hallway i'm not sure <laughs> so yeah oh uh, yeah thanks for yeah. doing that that's awesome yeah you saved a lot of people time, you know, because they're like, Ugh, I don't want to watch the award show. Did again. you guys see his speech at all? His wife, just the whole, her smile. I just kept focusing on her smile the whole time. <laughs> I didn't. I watched it a few, oh my God, go back and watch it. And that's all you're going to see. It was a weird ceremony. Time. It was just weird, you know, because you just don't have that uh, audience thing. It's just kind of like, woo. And then some of their audio yeah. is shit and you can't hear what they're saying. And yeah, it's like, yeah. wow, it just goes to show you like, you know. They're just like us. <laughs> sometimes we have great audio and sometimes we have shitty reception or whatever. And Jeff Daniels really looked like he was in a Zoom meeting with his outfit <laughs> and the quality of yeah. his camera. Yeah. And I mean, he just really felt like he was Zooming it. Well, yeah. And people picked on uh, Jason Sudeikis. He just had like a sweatshirt on. <laughs> he just looked like he came out of bed. His hair's all mess. Yeah. <laughs> he took it seriously. You could tell. Then you have the people who were wearing, you know, um, well, you get the PJs people and then the people who were like, oh, yeah, I'm really going to go out and get a dress and do my hair and do my makeup because <laughs> that's what the Golden Globes is about. And right. that I didn't understand. Yeah. But more power to them, right? Any uh, news topics anybody want to share? The only thing I had for news was the whole, um, quote, cancellation of Dr. Seuss and uh, Mr. Potato Head. What? I heard about Dr. 
Dr. Seuss. What about Mr. Potato Head? R.I.P. So, so they're still going to make Mr. Potato Head, but they're dropping the Mr. So that's more yeah. gender neutral. I don't know about you guys. I didn't. I had a Mr. Potato Head when I was growing up, and it came with like all the girly shit too. And they still called it Mr. Potato Head. Oh, it did. So what about Mrs. Potato Head? Is she? Are we dropping She's gone. the Mrs. off of that? I don't know. Is she gone? It's just going to come with like, you know, you can dress it up as a boy. You can dress it up as a girl. You can dress it up as a whatever oh, the new so trendy thing is. It's just going to be called Potato Head. Transsexual yeah. or I don't know. Why don't you just make it? Why don't you just make it a two pack and you can just do whatever the hell you want? You know, just. If Personally, I, I don't remember my no. Mr. Potato Head coming with a dick attachment, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you I know, also took one of his hands and shoved it in there. Walgreens did have an exclusive. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Did it, did it come with a syringe and a rubber oh, band to wrap it on its arm? Drugged out potato head. <laughs> Crackhead potato head. From what I remember, they both opened from the back. So I think head. that's pretty accurate. <laughs> well, you know, what, the funniest thing about it is I was looking online to see I was looking on, online to see if there were any discussions about this. And Bette Midler, of all people, had like just the most perfect quote for it. She'd be like, I'd be less concerned with whether or not it's a boy or a girl and more concerned with the fact that you store everything in its butt. <laughs> exactly. You know, the yeah, one what's thing that about? about the, yeah. the, the one funny uh, thing was that if you looked at originally Miss Potato Head, you had to supply your own potato. And then the attachments were metal spikes that you had to stick into the potato. <laughs> So it was actually a very dangerous toy to play with as a kid um, in in the uh, in the early days, and also I guess you could find some really funny potatoes to shove these metal objects into. But well, it created uh, serial killers too, probably. <laughs> so it was a good thing they went yeah. to plastic. <laughs> but uh, oh, I'm waiting boy. for the anatomically correct potato. Well, I mean, was their cells diminishing so much? Ugh. Like, do they have a lot of leftover <laughs> Mrs. Potato Head? And they're like, how can we salvage this? Like, no one wants to buy this. Uh, like, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, I I know I mentioned the Dr. Seuss thing. Like, that I can kind of see. I, I don't know who asked. It's one of those classic, like, hey, that's great. Who asked? Is it even still a popular toy with, like, all the... It's only popular I, because uh, of Toy Story yeah. anymore, I think. You got your Darth Vader kids. Potato Head and all that crap, so... What's that, Megan? Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, I they, have younger I kids, it. and I have yet to purchase one. I mean, I don't... Well, yeah, and they have that phone, too. That's also a Toy Story thing, but it was before that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just old school toys. and I think they, honestly, I think they just did it because, you know, they want to have a headline and sell more of the products. That's all I think. Like you said, divers- diversify, you know, meet more. Right. More of what consumers are now. I mean, because it'll get attention, and some people actually will buy it because of that. But I, I just, yeah, it's like, who was asking for this? Was there really a, a demand for this? You know, and it's a freaking potato. You know, <laughs> I mean, I guess yeah. a potato can't be Mister or Mrs. <laughs> um, I interjected. I apologize. No, you're no. fine. Apologize. I'm good. I approach the bench. My potato's mashed. I'm good. <laughs> Your potatoes mashed. That yeah, that sounded said? bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! I just been canceled, <laughs> guys. Uh, but uh, uh, I was gonna say, speaking of cancel cult- culture, TikTok. I don't know if you guys heard it's a big thing amongst Gen Zs and millennials, myself included, sure. obviously. Um, about the whole canceling of Eminem. People were calling for that. Oh, because what's that of- about? Oh, yeah. The rapper, right? Yeah. Not the candy. Oh. It- <laughs> yeah, the the rapper, not the candy. Uh, because of his lyrics, which oh come you know, on, no America already came from him once oh, come on. and failed. So, and I guess he released a song about it, uh, rightfully as he usually does. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I haven't listened to it, so I, I don't know. But I just that was interesting. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. You could eventually. Some of it's legit to to you know talk about and all that but eventually you're gonna pick apart everything and just it's you know anxiety fest just to think about it let alone if you're creating things like you're restricted like oh my gosh i can't do any of this anymore like you know that's stuff that's not even yet been uh you know pointed at as offensive 
it's just it just feels like it's art and you know there's just so much that hasn't been discussed that needs to be discussed you know like who's who wants to change all this it seems like people really rather have their rights you know as a human being first <laughs> then we can get into potato heads and shit but yeah like i think my favorite one then that and i've heard two of these uh just this week so far mm. uh, today um, they've canceled Pepe Le Pew. Yes, I um, saw that too. And uh, they've also reduced the bosom size of Lola, uh, which would be Bugs Bunny's uh, girlfriend from uh, hmm. uh, Sorry for Space Jam. Is it weird yeah. that I never, I guess as a female, I never... I guess as a male, I've never looked at a, right. at a fictional character. Well, okay, I take that back. It's not an animal. This I'm is not, not the like... discussion for Field of Geek. No, it's not. No. <laughs> is it though? I mean, That's know, the after you show, know, after midnight. Artist, would you be able to turn yourself Field on? Field of Geeks after dark. Night? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you provide the stories we'll provide the therapy <laughs> just imagine these people coming in man those bunny titties are too big <laughs> <laughs> you need to shrink and dink those down so <laughs> <laughs> who are you I don't know I just walked in from out of the street uh, I just had an idea it's alright I'll go now but anyway yeah, so I created Mr. My, Potato uh, Head. Excuse me. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Pepe Le Pew, because I could see like that offends the French, but does it? Like, was there a survey? Like, it it wasn't it wasn't even that. It was oh sexist, right? Aggressive. Yeah. The aggressiveness of his love for that cat um, <laughs> that people say is rape. So. Oh man, that's I stretching just... a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. Yep. Just erase so everything. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. Jesus. So anyway, those are oh, my okay. grapes. Great. Hey, Mitch, do you remember like a year ago, maybe it was a year ago, we're at Josh's house, we're all talking about like how the world was becoming like a PC society. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and here we are again, just talking about all the things. Well, it just, it's it's just sidetracks. You get locked up for too long. <laughs> it just yeah, start exactly. looking up. It just sidetracks the most important and... issue. That's the problem. There's more important things yeah. to discuss and tackle. This is like we're going after things that are way down on the list. Like no one's asking, I think, asking for this. But like Dr. Seuss, yes, they, they've canceled some books, right? Uh, but they're books I didn't even know of. I did see some imagery of them and some saint and yeah. some dialogue. So yes, it is troubling. I don't. Thankfully, it, I don't have to make the decision. <laughs> It is, okay, but so you know, you have to also you have to also realize he was he was doing propaganda for like World War II and stuff mm -hmm. like that at the same time as well. So I mean, it was just part of the. I hate to say it was part of the culture when yeah. he was, but this was like in the 1950s. It's like like you said, Josh. It was three very obscure books that I hadn't heard of. Mm -hmm. So I went back and checked them. I checked some of the imagery too, and I'm like, yeah, okay. That's at first I thought like, how can you? you know really go mm -hmm. that far with like little cat people but right then i looked at it and i was like yeah okay that might be offensive if like uh i don't know the wrong person saw it today they'd probably right. be like well i don't care what the context is it's offending well it just makes you but, think like should there just be a new uh should it be uh revisualized you know re uh redone this Obviously, some of the oh. written material needs to be done too. But it's like, do you do that or do you cancel? Like, I get the company in their, in their best interest. They're like, you know, these probably aren't massively popular books, so let's just, you oh, know, yeah, I could makes it easier. I could see if it was like, you know, how the Grinch stole Christmas. Yeah, if they canceled that for something because they thought that he looked too much like a greedy mm. something or other, you know? Yeah. Like I could see there being a little more of an uproar about it, but it was like the more I dug into it, the mm -hmm. more I was kind of like, yeah, I can see that. No, like I don't necessarily hundred percent right. agree with it, but I can see it. You know? It was, yeah, it was, it wasn't like he was a trend center with that stuff either. You know, there, like you said, it was a 1950s mentality of things and yeah, looking back, it's not the best. And yeah, I mean, there is a discussion that needs to be done about this. But Dr. Seuss himself, though, did so much great for everyone, for kids. And his legacy is, you know, it's something you should be um, 
you should look up to. And yeah, we're all human. And yeah, we're a victim of our times, basically, right? We're treading dangerously close yes. on some things that have happened in the past. <laughs> yes. And my concern is when you start to do that censor, um, even if you don't agree with it, I mean, hell, do you remember the whole conversation? Oh my God, this game is too aggressive. You gotta, mm-hmm. you gotta stop making it. Mm-hmm. Well, if the game's too aggressive, be a parent and not let your kid play it or yeah. don't play it. Right. Right. Um, yeah. you don't like the material, don't read it, but don't stop printing it because it's a part of history. And, and like what Bill was saying is it's a period piece. Mm-hmm. And the more that you try to censor history, the more you're doomed to repeat Mm-hmm. past incidences so while i i can say yes i probably don't agree with a stereotype of of what could be in a book i choose to acknowledge that it's there and acknowledge that that at that period of time that was an acceptable thing to do uh, but maybe i don't agree with it now and mm-hmm. if that's the case i would censor it from um, somebody i know or something like that or whatever the case may be but i don't think that you should ever st- like ban something because Mm -hmm. then you're treading in very dangerous, dangerous territories. And uh, I think we saw how that turned out, but um, but yeah, that's just, that's just my opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just not, it's not an easy topic to talk about, you know, a lot of people are, I think just kind of confused and, you know, they don't know what to think or they, or they do want to, they do know what to think, but then, you know, people will call them out and say, Oh, you know, how dare you support that or whatnot. But I don't know. Would it, well, would you be happy with a disclaimer? Like I know they've done that with some movies now on like HBO max, you know, something. Cause I, yes, it should be up to the parents, but still, you know, some parents will just sit their kid down. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it too, you have to look at world wartime mentality. Yeah. Especially around, around that time. It was, you know, we were like, we were relying on war bonds to fund the war effort mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah. And the way you did that was you made America hate the enemy we were fighting. True. Yep. You know? Yep. So, I mean, that's why he, you know, made the anti-Japanese and anti-German mm-hmm. war propaganda was to boost sales of war bonds. Right. Like it wasn't, you know, it doesn't make it right by today's standards, but mm-hmm. it's like Mitch said, it's part of our history. It's what we... You know, we did the same thing during Vietnam. There were countries that were doing the same thing about us right? when we were right. fighting. You know, so, I mean, it's it's just, you know, yeah, we're, we're a little more tolerant now, I think, than we were then. Mm-hmm. But, sure. you know, it is, in some respects, I would say, yeah, take it out of circulation, but take, like, three of them that are print the, you know, one of each of them that are printed and put it like in the Smithsonian. Yeah. Yeah. And be like, this is part of our history or some, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe not Smithsonian, but you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. yeah. Preserve it somehow so that it's the Library not, of Congress. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. so. I mean, it's, it's not like a, yeah. you know, and it doesn't have to be a how to manual. It, mm-hmm. it has to be a, this is why we don't do this anymore manual. You know, right, yeah, it's it's an example, yeah, because yeah, get into it. you know, there's several ways to tackle it, and um, yeah, you don't want to forget that history. So if you take it away, then if it comes back, then you're not going to be able to recognize it. It's interesting, mm-hmm. and it's it's really interesting because there's different forms of of that, uh, you know, mm-hmm. um, twofold. So, like for example, a lot of people said, you know, the burning of the Library of Alexandria, we lost hundreds of years of technology that we could be so further along than what we are right now because Mm -hmm. that that library burned that's that's the value of of books and Mm -hmm. writing and and historic keeping historical data what what if they just put it all on on digital copy or just had like an internet version of it so that we we could always you know yeah or 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 like yeah or like you were saying like put it in a section where it's just like you know, this book may contain images that are mm-hmm. disturbing or, or something like this. This depicts a period of time in which may upset some people due to the mm-hmm. period of when it was written and stuff, just so that people are warned up front. But Right, you know. right. And you could all be, you know, another thing you could do is uh, teach about what was wrong with it. Maybe, like, right. like I said, like update it to current times, but make the old one available for comparison and ex- explanation. You know, I think that would be wise. Overall, it's the company's decision. So they're like, you know, we're not popular books. So, I mean, not to me anyway. I didn't even know about these books. So, but yeah, I, I don't think yeah. you should cancel um, Dr. Seuss at all. He's yeah. human. 
and he, well, he did a lot of good. Well, come a day when they, there will come a day when they start trying to ban biblical books of all relation or all religions, and then we'll say, oh, that's too far. But then they'll say, well, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's and that's it's, we'll get a put it's a rocky down. it's a rocky road and um yeah yeah I don't want to get into book burnings or anything like that so uh, hopefully yeah. we don't get there but well let's move on to uh, reviews I had the pleasure of watching Coming to America two Coming to America did you really have the pleasure though I wanted Was to it a pleasure. Mm. <laughs> Well, you know how I, you know, I wanted to like this film. I really did. And, you know, the first trailer was not, you know, amazing to me. Second one was much better. I actually laughed out loud. Funny thing is they took that scene out that I laughed out loud with. Oh, There's a lot really? of scenes they actually did not use from the trailers. I hate when they do that. But in this case, it might have improved things. But, you know, of course, everyone who doesn't know or, you know, knows this is a sequel to Coming to America, the 1988 classic film that starred Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, uh, James Earl Jones, John Amos, and uh, a bunch of other people. And most of them do make their uh, return in this film. It's uh, now directed by Greg Brewer. He did Hustle and Flow, Black Snake, Moan, Dolomite is My Name, which was the big comeback film Eddie Murphy was in yeah that was a good one yeah uh he you know received nominations and he even got some awards for his performance so yeah things were looking up and you know when they announced this team was going to make a sequel to coming to america i was not excited when i first announced it i just was like why would you make a sequel after all this time <laughs> it better be good right it's got to be good you know to finally right decide to do it so the story you know it's set in present day 33 years later and you know, this is, I'm not giving away much, but Keem has a bastard son he didn't know of, and he lives in Queens, New York, so he um, he has to basically, you know, rekindle that relationship, well, not really rekindle, like, get to know his son. It's also for uh, matters of the kingdom. They have to have a male successor, so Keem's about ready to become king, and all he has is daughters currently with Lisa, so the rules are no no females can, can rule. So, yeah, it's um, it's just sad to say that this film isn't good. It's not good. Uh, all the jokes just fell flat. And, you know, one good thing it kind of did was it opened up the universe a little bit more. You got to see more of Zamunda and Wesley Snipes is like a dictator neighbor to them. And I'm not kidding you. The the kingdom, his kingdom is uh, next Doria. So, uh <laughs> Not oh far, dear. Not far fetched. That is but really terrible. Yeah. He uh yeah, he wishes one of Akeem's children to marry one of his. He's got a, a son and a daughter, so kind of goes back and forth. Uh but yeah, a lot of old tropes, you know, they brought back. Does that don't make sense. You know, if you made the sequel like ten years later or whatever, yes, but like the barbers are brought back. We know this from the trailer. Those guys would be long gone by now. <laughs> Those guys were old then. <laughs> And they look the same, obviously, because Eddie Murphy and Arsene Hall play those characters. Um, some of their dialogue was decent, but just a waste, man. They just, I don't know what happened. You know, if I, if I was going to make a sequel to something this many years later, I would make sure it was like on par. And it just has some old tropes, you know, and uh, it's predictable. And they kind of try to flip the story from the first one, but it just, uh, it's just... It was kind of painful to watch, to be honest. But yeah, it's just a nostalgia fest without any originality. It's kind of like, you know, Luke Skywalker in um, uh, The Last Jedi, you know, how you wanted to see the Luke you knew come back, you know. Uh, Akeem's kind of that way in this film. Like, you know, you would think they changed the rules for him to marry Lisa, who is not uh, royal blood. And you would think the kingdom would make other changes, but spoiler, they, they never really did, you know? So Akeem's kind of, you know, he's not really a trend sender after he married Lisa, but it's great to see all the cast back. That's the only positive thing I got, you know, it's, you know, it's very, it's trying to be very um, clever, but not really, it's kind of breaking down all the characters that were established in the first one, which you didn't really need to say out loud. Um, you know, just kind of their shortcomings, right, that are offensive now. 
But yeah, it just oof, it just was yeah. not uh yeah, parts of it felt rushed and kind of small. Like there's some sets that yeah, they just they seem like they just filmed them really quick, you know, and not much space, but yeah, it's just unfortunately, it's I don't think it's worth seeing. Uh I haven't seen the original since I've seen this, but I, I do plan on it and yeah, I plan to enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> that original is such a classic, but I mean, they tried, sort of, but it's shocking because Murphy did write some of this, and there's a big, you know, like I said, big cast. You think they they would sign on liking the script, but yeah, it's just kind of tone deaf, you know. And some of the jokes were just stupid and just kind of like those, you know, those. It's just a new type of humor that doesn't work with these characters. So yeah, it's on Amazon Prime if you want to check it out. It actually dropped a day early. But yeah, uh, it's a big bummer. I was really hoping uh, hoping for better. But it's a good thing it didn't go to the theater. I think maybe that's why Paramount sold it to Amazon. <laughs> they they probably knew they had a a bad bad movie on their hands. But yeah. So yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I know. I wanted to like it, man. Anymore. Five minutes in, yeah. I was like, this is not good. And it's not getting better. Like, man, I hate I hate when you go see a movie. You sit down and... Yeah, you just know right off the start, like, yep, this is, uh, I'm not going to get this time back. <laughs> it's a train wreck. It's painful. I We talked about before the show, um, I think Bill brought it up, Blues Brothers 2000. I actually yes. told everyone that movie's probably better than yeah. this movie. <laughs> it's, yeah, Ooh. it's bad. It's that really stands bad. on because that was. I think what's good about these sequels is it brings you back to the first movie it was years since I saw the first Blues yeah. Brothers. I saw the 2000, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. You know, like I kind of liked it, but then I saw the first one. I was like, oh, my God, they pretty much made the same movie. Like, every every beat's the same. Yeah. Uh, this movie is not every beat's yeah. the same. So I think that's where it gets worse, in my opinion. Uh, they try to, like, switch it up, and it just doesn't work. But Blues Brothers 2000 actually probably had better humor, <laughs> if that's, you know saying much but yeah um yeah shockingly blues brothers 2000 is, I mean, is better than this <laughs> there's been so many times where they've made you know hollywood has decided to like green light sequels to movies that nobody ever really needed yes yes like they did yeah. that with, Zool- with zoolander oh, that was they a- did it with joe dirt like never to see joe dirt but zoolander I mean, too was like, like i mean i would say like anchorman 2 would be like one of the exceptions like i that like was actually that kind of funny yeah yeah, I, I did, it did like have that some one. good lines in it and stuff like that. But yeah, when you basically just try to make the same movie over again twenty years later, it doesn't work. Bring some growth into it. Like yeah, Anchorman two did it did do that. It it changed it up. They weren't at the same news station. You know, they went they went other places and relationships evolved and new characters were brought in and it was funny, I thought, you know. I'm not I don't know. I, I think it's just as good as the first almost, but I know a lot of other people think the first one's a lot better and the second one wasn't, but I, I definitely think uh, the jokes were on par, com- especially compared to Coming to America. <laughs> um, there's not a lot yeah. of f- flat jokes in that one. Um, I just think the writing was better for that, unfortunately, but yeah, it's crazy. And they even make a joke about sequels um, being made well well long after the first one. You know, it, um <laughs> Was it Be Cool? They did the same joke. I don't know if you remember that one. That was a sequel to Get Shorty, which was a masterpiece compared to Be Cool. Uh, Be Cool is probably better than Coming to America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not selling this movie, am I? Yeah. Was, yeah. I no, guess. There's no need to. Mm, yeah. I'm well, saying, you know. I think you sold us on not seeing it. Yeah. They're not paying you, so. I which mean, is, you know, I, I take no pleasure in doing that because I really wanted this to be good. And I hope Eddie Murphy doesn't go back into his hole, you know, where he, he kind of like, you know, his box office is bad and he disappears for 10 years. I mean, he's pushing 60. It's like if you're going to do other things, now's the time. You know, there's talk he's going to do stand up. I, I hope so. You know, I think the dollar signs is what will take him to keep going, even though, you know, critic critical acclaim is not going to be there for this film but yeah it's unfortunate yep it's just another sequel that shouldn't have you know it could have been made maybe five years after the first that would have been the time to you know strike but yeah it just makes no sense for some of these characters to be back other than hey you remember these guys like yes i I totally get it i love those characters this doesn't make any damn sense (laughs) 
<laughs> this becomes a cartoon. Moving on to something better. WandaVision. Uh, the last three episodes have oh, finished. Yeah. Had a big finale there. Uh, can't believe um, it's over. I think they're gonna make they're gonna have a making of premiere this Friday, and I was yeah. bummed that the episodes didn't get longer. I think they only got longer by like ten minutes, but we started getting the last after credits. Was an hour? Was it an hour? Mm-hmm. I know we we did get after credits, so I was happy when those started. What were your thoughts of episodes seven through nine? Just finishing out the series. Um, I'm very happy with it, but I wanted more. Yeah. I think just cause I got so invested in it and I was like, great. Now I have to wait for how long until Dr. Strange comes out. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that, that was the only bad thing. I, yes. I liked the way they left it though, because they left it open enough to where some questions can be answered in Dr. Strange. Some questions could be answered with mm-hmm. next Captain Marvel movie. Kevin Feige's huge about that. And you'll think like, okay, whatever happened to that guy? And then like five <laughs> mi- five movies or shows later, it's like, oh, there he is again. He's, um, a, he's about ready so to make I mean, a Star Wars film. <laughs> you, you kind of have to look at that, but... Yes. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I think he'll do a good I, Star I Wars. I don't mean, oh, God, by Kevin Feige. I'm just, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Why Star we'll Wars? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I think uh, I, I think it had a lot of good callbacks to the comics, and yes, um, I was kind of expecting the end of it to be more like M Day. Oh sure, or like Decimation, whatever that was. Um, right, but set I'm up happy more. With yeah. the way it ended. I'm happy with the way it ended. Um, I don't think there's probably going to be much talk of what happened in this show when uh, Captain America or whatever Falcon and Winter Soldier yes. come out, but right. You know, I think uh, I think it, it set some things in motion for the future of the MCU. So I'm. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm completely satisfied with it. Yeah, and it gave us things we I I wanted for sure from Endgame. I I wanted Vision back, you know, and I'm glad that we got two versions basically. So that was really fun to see. And um, but yeah. boy, was that a uh, like a very visual gap in the storyline because he just flies off and says, "I am Vision." But yes. Where does he go? Right. Is he going to be like, and the way that they kind of left off the ending there um, is I, I have a feeling that she's going to meet him again. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens from there is going to be interesting. And I think it has a lot to do with uh, into the multiverse movie coming out here soon. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I the only, Big complaint I kind of have. It felt like maybe we needed another scene or something, but uh, director Hayward seemed to really turn without much um, explanation into like a mustache twirling villain, if you will. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that was yeah. just kind of like, really? Like, okay. Like I wish his conversation with Monica uh, from the start, there was some hint there, but I thought he was a cool dude and just felt like a stretch a little bit, you know, like maybe we needed a little bit yeah. more. I don't know. I, I loved what well, we had. I, I had said this to you before when we were chatting on uh, Facebook yeah. one day, Josh, um, I kind of got the uh, general Ross vibe from him. Sure. Where he, he kind of thought he was doing the right thing, but it wasn't for the right reasons mm-hmm. or, you know, I don't know. He's, he kind of seemed to me like he was doing this because he saw what threats were being posed to the world, especially after, you know, mm-hmm. him being one of the ones that survived the snap. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of made mention of that in an earlier episode, but yeah, I mean, he kind of just kind of just got arrested and it's like, yeah, we're not going to see him until there's a, you know, Billy and Tommy show 20 years later, <laughs> yeah. probably. And he's going to be, <laughs> the big, big bad or something right but uh you know i mean they kind of they're kind of doing that with like zemo from mm-hmm. yeah, from uh civil war yep like he thought he was just kind of done and now he's going to show back up again so sure you never know he could he could make another appearance later sure. on but yeah. uh yeah I, I, I thought it was interesting like i even i even had to go back and watch um episode four when he was saying that uh Wanda had broken into their facilities and stole vision. Right. Um, 
Because like when they showed in episode seven, when they actually showed her there, I was like, well, she didn't take him at all. Yeah. So I went back and looked at the footage and stuff. I went back and like looked at the footage and stuff. And I was like, I could have sworn it showed her like taking off with him, but it didn't. I didn't know if he like maybe doctored it or something yeah, like that. To try like and make cut it, villain, cut it but, up. Yeah. Like her, yeah. her entering the, the headquarters with her powers and then you cut and then the glass yeah. breaking, I think. And then visions everywhere cut. And then it's like, yeah, he, she took him. So it kind of made it less creepy though. Cause when she had those visions of <laughs> visions, when she had visions of vision <laughs> dead, you were like, is this corpse just walking around? Like that's kind of gross, you know, but it's yeah. He was never there. Like, she created them out of uh, out of her her mind, her mind stone, if you will. It set up so much. I, I know a lot of people are kind of upset about the the cliff the, or the ending, and I, I don't really understand it. You know, I think it it set up so much that you would need like two movies to set up. You know, um, you know, uh, yeah. Agatha Har- Harkness. Uh, that was that was a cool reveal. That song was awesome. Um, it actually is high up on the charts. I don't know if you've heard that, but. It's catchy. My kids love it. I mean, yeah. that's kind of been a treat of this show. Like, my family and I actually watch it, and I didn't think they would they would dig it, but they, they do. And, uh, you know, I'll watch it. I usually watch it during the day, and then that night we'll watch it together. But, yeah, um, it's yeah. cool It's cool to see their reaction to it. And, you know, it just helps, it helps them want to see more of them in the movies and all that. So that's good. It's good PR. <laughs> But yeah, Catherine Hahn, yeah. she's awesome, and she really did a good job with that character. I think a lot of she us did. saw that coming. Yeah, she played a she played a played a really convincing villain, and I hope somehow they bring her back. Yeah, um, I don't think her story's over. Like, yeah, she she's been part of the comics for years. Sure. Yep. I mean, going back to the '60s. So you know, she's probably going to show up when the Fantastic Four have their kid. <laughs> there you go. Is she was, I, th- I think, in the comics, like she was the one trying to help him control yes. his powers or something. That's right. She's kind of a good guy, right? Or no? Well, she she's like a conditional ally. Right. She's gotcha. She's like neutral. Sure. I guess I, I can you see know? that. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. People's uh, complaints is like the fan theories were more interesting than the outcome because it was predictable in the end, kind of. But I, I don't have a problem with that. You know, that's that's fans' faults, you know, for it was fun, right? You know, a lot of YouTube personalities thrived on this weekly, you know, new episode, which, you know, I, I don't know if um I really liked it was like the whole whole nation seemed to be on the same page, you know, if you dug the show. Yeah. I kinda like that about the week by week versus the all at once. I don't think you would have gotten yeah, you wouldn't have gotten all this, this, these theories or, you know, these like, what, oh, what could it be, you know, because, yeah, you'd binge it in a day and that'd be it. So I, I think the week, yeah, week I, by week formula uh, is the best way. I think I'm pretty happy that I didn't binge it all at once because then I would have mm-hmm. been just, I, it was exciting to have that to look forward to. Yes. And to know that, like, you didn't have to take a big chunk of your time to watch one episode. It was right. You know, if you took out the 12 minutes worth of credits, it was like a 20 minute show. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Well, in you it, know, so, I mean, it, was, it wasn't bad. by yeah. any means, I don't think. And I loved we got to see a flashback of her and her family. Like, that's what established the, yeah. the reasoning for the television world she created. Like, she was basically raised on just like we thought that she was raised on those tapes. And, you know, I I expected like kind of like the end of end game where like you're happy that it's here and everything like that, but it's so heartbreaking with like Tony dying and stuff like that. Right. I kind of expected that with this one, but I got that more so from episode eight than episode nine. If that makes any sense. Oh yeah. I think uh, she's going through and doing her flashbacks and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, of course. Like that was. I think like just seeing the way she, you know, seeing the way she interacted with her family and with vision mm-hmm. and, Things like that. It kind of, you know, that that kind of made you really feel for mm-hmm. Wanda and just all the things that she's gone through. Yeah, well, it was cool and to then, see the the scene where she, they described in Age of Ultron. You you see that scene. You see the Stark Industries weapon in yes. the living room, and then the reveal that I think this is pretty much hundred percent. But she already was a witch. Like she was going to do something, and Agatha was like. 
I forgot what kind of spell she claimed she did with the missile, but she said, how long were you here? And she said two days, and then she smirked. I'm like, okay, I think something – definitely knew something was up when uh, Wanda saw the yeah. Tesseract and what it did. Like, that's how her and her brother survived. They were they already had powers, and it just woke them up. I really thought that was interesting. Yeah, it was cool to see her at, like, the Strucker facility when she first kind of, you yes. know, interacted with the Mind Stone mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that part was really cool. That's what made me think they were going to go in the direction of mutants this but it's yeah you could, never really did but you could stretch I mean, it a little bit but yeah there's yeah. no no magneto for their father unfortunately <laughs> knew that wasn't going to happen well but. yeah not everything from the comics needs to be adapted right i mean you know yeah you would yeah you would never please everybody anyway like it, it would be, be like <laughs> you know some things are just too predictable like mm-hmm. you know if we got a new spider-man movie we're going to be like oh who are they going to get to play uncle ben to die in the beginning you know? <laughs> yeah but which is why they didn't there's tackle it with uh, Tom like Hardy or um, Holland. They didn't tackle Uncle Ben with him much. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they didn't really need to at this no, point. No, they They're didn't. Like, We've seen it too knows. much. Yeah, but um, I think the very end where she's like astral projecting and reading the book. Yeah, reading the Darkhold, um, and then she hears Tommy and Billy yelling for her. Yes, I think that's going to be like hinting at Mis- at Mephisto. Oh, sure. Like the temptation to go evil, pretty much, you're, you're thinking? Well, because um, in the – I don't know how they did it. I can't remember what came first. I think it was – at first, her children were shards of Mephisto. Mm-hmm. And then – Oh, sure. Like, they went back into Mephisto, and then that's what killed him. Right. Because, you know, their goodness overpowered him or whatever. Sure, and then, sure. You know, then like the next time she had kids, they were basically like, that's when Doctor Strange came in and said, they never existed, Wanda. Like, mm. you need to stop this yes. kind of thing. But I don't know. Maybe we'll get something along those lines. But, you know, I thought what would be cool you know, is like the cabin setting they had for her. If Doctor Strange showed up, you didn't see him, maybe. But he just says, uh, Monica, I've come to bargain or something like that. And then it's like, boom. Yeah. Like, you know, those two are going to be. <laughs> I think he's going to become a teacher. That's my guess. And there is a theory as to where the actual vision went to. Some say, and it makes a lot of sense, uh, back to Wakanda, because that was his last memory. So he probably maybe went back to, is it Shuri? Is that? Um, yeah. Yeah, because he's probably like, well, fix I'm, me. <laughs> I'm, I'm old. Well, white. <laughs> she might have like, she might have like downloaded his, you know, schematics or whatever yeah. when she was working on him and. Oh sure, All yeah. That. So that would make sense. Yeah, because that's something they but, could. Uh, that's something they could dabble with, right? Because she was in the middle of doing something, and then he had to get up. Yeah. But it's like something was started there, I think, and they can revisit that. So yeah, I loved the new, the robotic version of Vision. I did read up on a little bit of the white uh, Vision. I think that's what they call him in the comics. But yeah, he's basically just yeah, no emotion. He's just machinery and. I think when they reconstructed him in the comics and he became the white version, like he had all the memories of the old vision, but he didn't have any emotion. Oh, sure. Sure. Or something like that. Like it's basically just like, you know, a computer accessing Mm -hmm. data from a hard drive. Like, okay, I can see this, you know, where Thanos killed me and right. where Wanda killed me. And then I got brought back and killed again. And sure. Sure. Yeah. It's like he's so, you know, he soulless but... in a way, like maybe the vision somehow had a soul. I mean, there was a lot, a lot in there to work with. That was kind of vague, you know, like when they're battling, yeah. you know, it's like, how is this vision able to do, you know, zap the other vision. And they're saying now that the robotic vision is more powerful so I'm not sure how that, you know, without the Infinity Stone, you would think, how are you going to match up to that? And unless they're able to clone it somehow, I don't know. Well, I mean, he is still technically powered by it. Right. They, they couldn't they couldn't activate him until they had, like, the residual power from Wanda. Yes, so that was a nice setup. Technically, he is powered by it. But, yeah, um, I don't know. I thought the um, – I know Paul Bettany wants to still play Vision. Sure. So that's good for the future of it. But yeah. I think the original vision has come full circle. Yes. Just the speech that he gave to mm. Wanda at the end, where he's like, I was a you know, a voice without a body, then 
then I became a, a body without, you know, a soul. And then I became who I am today. Who knows what I'll be next. Yeah. Living memory. Kind of yeah. That was cool. That was cool. So, uh, I mean, I think, I think they're going to do a lot of great things with the MCU. Um, I know there's people saying, Oh, they can't make it work without RDJ and without Chris Evans. And, uh, to them, I say, suck it. I think it's going to be fun to see where it goes. I just hope, I just hope that Feige doesn't pass it on to somebody else and they come in and just totally fuck it up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, yeah. Please, I, Rian Johnson, stay far away from the MCU. <laughs> and J.J. Abrams. Sorry, I had to say that. Yes, you too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, what about you, Mitch? Um, things you liked and loved and maybe didn't so much? Anything? Expectations? I thought it was a really good ending. I actually thought... Uh, was is sad because, I mean, she's she's kind of going through this whole grieving process and mm-hmm. i think the the entire plot of this is how does she get over grieving for vision yeah well it, it uh unfortunately leaves her worse off in some ways than others but sure. in, in a new way she found a new power so um you know the the whole white vision thing i'll be really interested to see where that goes the one thing that really did tick me off though is the fact that when when they were fighting, there was one scene where I'm like, oh, well, Vision could have just, like, become invisible or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when Thanos was trying to get the stone, he could have just zoop. Yeah, I did think of that, he... too. I'm like, where was that power? And here I'm sitting, <laughs> my God. Yeah. Where did that, See, why didn't that happen? But there's an explanation, I think. I think, I think there, yeah, I think the explanation was when he got stabbed by... Yep. The spear it stopped him from phasing. Yes. So that's why oh, he was okay. he was like all that's why he was like crippled throughout all of Infinity War. If okay. it wasn't for that, he probably would have just killed everybody and been like, right. "Okay, let's go get ice cream. <laughs> We're done." Yeah. <laughs> it's an hour movie. Okay, that makes more sense. I know yeah. a great shawarma place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I did think of that, Mitch. I did. I was like, "Wait a minute, why didn't?" I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah, he was damaged." So yeah, yeah, good writing, I guess, right? Because. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, like, hey, plot really hole. What the hell? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Scarlet finally became Scarlet Witch. Like, she's got the look. It looks great. Um, yeah. The the uh, fight with her and Agatha I thought was good. You know, some people said they were disappointed by it. I don't know. What were your thoughts on that? Did uh, Was that okay for you? or? I, it was interesting. Um, I, I did like um, the interaction with uh, Jimmy. Um, I thought that was awesome. Oh, yeah, I love that character. Um, and I can't, I can't wait to see what they give to him because I, I know that a lot of fans latched on yeah. him as a character. Oh, for um, sure. Because he kind of has, he kind of has that Agents of Shield. Um, what's his name? Oh, Coulson. Um, Coulson. Yeah, he he's a Boy Scout. Feel. Yeah, yep. Yeah, where he's just like an overall good guy in a sea of bad people that are with him. <laughs> you know, yeah. and he's he's funny. And yeah. he's and everybody calls him Asian Jim, and it's <laughs> like, hey, Asian Jim's on Wandavision, and he's still <laughs> freaking hilarious. Um, and and I it, so much so that I had to watch uh, the interview this weekend just to see him as uh, uh, Kim Jong Un. Oh yeah. yeah, he was good in that. That and was that, funny. And, That's my and first introduction then, to him. He's hilarious. Oh yeah, he's he's Remember? very talented. Yes. Didn't he start out with they hate us because they ain't us? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like I think uh, yeah. uh, Franco's character said that, and then he took it up. Yeah. Or maybe I'm not sure. And then he takes up. Yeah, he takes up the monitor. Oh god. He's that a good actor. A I mean, movie. he, he yeah, played he it was. serious pretty much in that film. I mean, he had a few scenes where he right? got weird or got you know had a lot of humor, but he's he's really good actor. Yeah, Randall Parks his name. He's yeah he's been in a lot of things. He even forgot he was on The Office. And he had people on kidding? the yeah he had people on the streets calling him Asian Jim. And he's like first his instinct was like fuck you, and he's like oh yeah, yeah. I was on the office <laughs> towards the last season. <laughs> yeah, that was actually oh. that was awesome. Yeah, uh, he was super oh. talented. So I'm I'm happy. He's actually in both universes right now. He's you know obviously in Marvel and DC. He was in Aquaman, getting right. double paid. I hope. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he was he was a great character. Um, yeah, Monica becoming. We don't know what the hell she's becoming, right? She's either the new Captain Marvel or she's Photon. 
that was that was yeah. a cool transformation. I, I would have liked to have seen more of her powers, but I guess she's she acted like she wasn't really like scared of her abilities. Like she's already experienced some stuff. Maybe I don't know, but um, yeah, I think maybe she'll get some more explanation of that when they see her like link up with Nick Fury. Yes. Yeah, which um, uh yeah, you think that's what that's referring to Nick Fury, right? I would I would say. Yeah. Yeah, connects um, the ending. I had to actually go on Wikipedia to look up what her powers were cuz I was like, okay, does she have the power of plot convenience or what? Like what's <laughs> going on here? But right. yeah, I guess like she she can make herself like intangible and like manipulate energy and stuff like that. So it's kind of like okay, now that I know that, it kind of makes a little more sense, but at the same time, like, didn't you just have these get these powers like an hour ago? Right. And now you have full control over them. That's OK. <laughs> yeah, that's Whatever. a little, um, little stretch. Yeah, that's what makes me think she's already experienced something. I don't know. But hopefully she'll just be I bet she'll just be photon. Maybe if they do anything with her right now, I can't see her being yep. Captain Marvel because they've kind of just started on that. So maybe well, I don't know. Doing, then they're doing Ms. Marvel, too. So it's kind of like, right. You know, the whole concept behind that is that Kamala Khan is a huge Captain Marvel fan, and she's mm-hmm. only visited Earth twice now. So it's kind of like sure. they probably need to establish that character yeah. a little bit more. But but I did I did read um, that Monica, Monica Rambeau was actually the original Captain Marvel, unless I'm mistaken. So the whole oh. Carol Danvers thing was, yeah, was a they flipped that. So I don't know. Maybe oh, she, she was Ms. Marvel at first, wasn't she? Possibly. Like she didn't go by Captain Marvel. She went by Ms. Marvel. Yeah, and then they obviously made that character into something else. Yeah, yeah. It was because, I think, of um, Shazam or something. There was a problem there. Very similar names yeah, or something was... they had to do. They yeah. had to change it up. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was trying that's to um... think of... Uh, yeah, so yeah, Nick Fury, that's set up. Monica in her cabin. Um yeah, the Scarlet Witch look looks uh, that was really cool. I was like, wow, they really went it, for it. <laughs> for uh you know, for I think there's a fine line between like the film costume and the comic costume. Like obviously mm-hmm. you can't put Hugh Jackman in yellow spandex and make right. him look like a badass. Only in a Deadpool movie but, you could. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um like they I think they actually did really good with her outfit. Like I think it looks yeah, you know, without without looking over the top and ridiculous, I think it looks pretty good. I do too. Yeah. Um, I think they've done in that respect. I think they've done a pretty good job with like the costumes for the MCU. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we also uh, <laughs> we also found out who uh, uh, what's her name Agnes's husband was. Yes, Evan Peters. Uh, He's not Quicksilver. Spoiler. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Who is he, Bill? <laughs> Ralph Boner. Ralph Boner. <laughs> oh, Which a lot of people are like, oh, I hope this was like a multi-dimensional, like that's the Quicksilver from X-Men. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That would be a stretch. I heard about that too. I was like, no, I don't think so. But that's hey, I can yeah, they, I can maybe I can maybe see him being like Jimmy Woo's, you know, um witness protection dude. Yeah, was he? Because we saw be, that photo, right? I didn't know if that meant he's yeah, an, a- he's an actor was, or something else. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was just a headshot. Yeah. I think it was just like, he's just an actor well, and, or something. Yeah. You never got that but scene. I was with, like, yeah. wait a minute. That's her <laughs> husband. That's weird. Well, that's, that's but, the thing to think um, about. Like, did was yeah, Eddie's, she was actually, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I think she was mind controlling him from the start. Like the yeah. reason he, he was able to do all the stuff he could do is because of that necklace right right Because like as soon as she as soon as monica takes that off he's like oh god don't hurt me <laughs> and turns into a you know total well well but i Ralph i Ralph boner i got to thinking boner. though like what if agnes lived there with ralph and this whole world changed but she knew it was different because she's a witch like you know, they don't really explain how she entered the hex. Like, yeah. you know, like, I'm not saying it's a solid theory, but they never do go go there. Like, how did she come upon the hex? Like, she wasn't in the woods and got, I, like, a calling, and she's like, oh, I got to go see what this is. You know, I think that, like, since she knows about the Sorcerer Supreme, yes. that maybe we're going to get a little backstory in Doctor Strange. 
I hope so. Yeah. But it sets up so much. The thing that, yeah, I mean, the thing that I thought was cool is that, like, you, your power rivals the Sorcerer Supreme. Yes. I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to have a <laughs> magic battle that will actually battle, be yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, her, her second. Uh, I don't know. I, I like the the action scenes in the final show. The final episode were fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the magic thing could have been it, the end part of it was was phenomenal. Yes. But like yeah. the rest of it, I was expecting a little more like Doctor Strange, you know, like Ancient One kind of stuff. I wish. Yeah, but, that we would. If we got that, I think it would have been just right. Um, I still like everything. I just felt like that was it. Like, um, not anything else. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't worry. We've got Winter Soldier coming up, and oh, what, Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah, just a few days. Yeah. Yeah, I think that will. I like I said before. I think this Friday they're going to premiere the making Next. of WandaVision, and then the Friday after that, I think we get Falcon Winter Soldier. If I'm, yeah, and then Loki will yeah. come, and then Hawkeye, I believe. So, yeah, super, oh. super exciting. Thanks, Bill, again for guesting. Um, you've been like on every show. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much. Um, yeah. It's been great talking about WandaVision. Anytime. Yeah, of course. Uh, please plug your channel for everyone. Yes. Uh, so I did have a new video that posted last night. And uh, I, as I do, usually when I go on, I, I view it just to make sure everything looks good and realize that my captions were off by like five, 10 seconds. So I'm going to be re editing that and re uploading it tonight. But, um, Probably going to be looking to do some more streaming here um, in the near future, uh, mostly on YouTube, of course, because Twitch sucks. <laughs> you can quote me on that. Um, but uh, yeah, everything's going good. It's been kind of slow. So uh, we're hoping to get some. I got a new uh, Let's Play that's going to be a new Let's Play series coming out very soon. Great. So that's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, please subscribe. Five one five a new pair of shoes. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, anyway, thanks a lot, guys, for being on. I'm Josh. I'm Mitch. I'm Bill. I'm Megan. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>